praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter number 11. Look at verse number 1, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The Amplifier says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to our senses. We're in a series of lessons entitled Faith for Our Families, amen. <clears throat> and, uh, and so it is that we've been talking about how the family is important to God, and it should be important to us. We have an adversary, the devil, who's trying to kill, steal, and to destroy our family. And, and your family is not exempt from him attacking it, amen. amen. <laughs> so you're going to have to fight for your own family. Amen. Praise the Lord, amen. And so, so since we know that God's plan for our lives is, uh, is through the relationships that we have with our family, our adversary tries to tear it up. And so we've been looking at it and endeavoring to find out what God says for our family. And particularly, we've been talking about the marriage relationship. And I hope that you've been enjoying this series because I know I have. Every time I talk about marriage, I just go back and tell Sister Gwen how much I love her. Praise the Lord. Amen. It, it strengthens our relationship to see what God has to say about it. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 3, rather. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Amen. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Look at verse number 7. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse number seven. Amen. First Peter chapter three, verse number seven. Are you there? Look what it says. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, <clears throat> giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So we found out in previous lessons that, one, we got to submit ourselves one to the other. And I have, to, I have to love my wife, the Bible says, as Christ loved the church. And then I have to dwell with my wife according to knowledge. <clears throat> Not because she's physically weaker, but because we're partners, amen? <clears throat> Somebody say partners. <clears throat> we're partners together. And our prayers can be hindered if we don't handle our domestic relationship properly, according to the plan and will of God. And so last week, we, been, we began to talk about how we should love each other. Somebody say love each other. Love each other. Amen. Because see... Once the honeymoon is over, praise the Lord, amen, it's time for you to work that thing out. And I, I have always said that marriage is work. What you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. The more love you put into it, the more love you're going to get out of it, amen. Go to uh, Titus chapter number two. Titus chapter number two. Look at verse number four. Titus chapter number two, verse Number four, amen. Good to see you, Keista. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Looked up and seen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Titus chapter two, look at verse number four. <clears throat> look what it says. That they may teach the young women, it's talking about the older women, teach the young women how to, how to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children. Ephesians chapter five, verse 25 says, husbands love your wives as Christ has loved the church. So undoubtedly God wants us to love each other. Amen. And I submit to you that the love feeling that you had at the marriage ceremony. Amen. Must continue throughout your relationship. Amen. But the good news is that this love that I'm talking about today, God has already placed it inside of us. Amen. Amen. Go to go to uh, go to Romans. Romans. Chapter. Number, praise the Lord, Romans chapter number five. Amen. The love that God wants us to exhibit, he's already placed it inside of us. Amen. And we got to love just like God loves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter five. Hallelujah. Let's see. Romans chapter 5. Look at verse number 5. Romans chapter number 5. Verse number 5. Look what it says. And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So the agape type of love that God wants us to exhibit with our, in our relationship, God says, I've already placed it in you. 
The Holy Ghost has already made a deposit on the inside of you. Amen. It's in your DNA. Praise the Lord. So that's why I can't understand how it is that even with church folk, that the divorce rate is just as high as those in the world. When the Bible says that he has deposited inside of us his love. Amen. See, and I, I, I realize why so many people fall out of love. Because many of them have, have uh, the eros type of love. And once the eros is gone, amen, you figure that you don't love him anymore. I just, Pastor, I just don't love him anymore. Why? Is the eros gone? Or are you living by the agape type of love? Because if you're living by the agape type of love, guess what? He says the Holy Ghost has placed it in your heart. Amen. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter number 4. Amen. Amen. 1 John chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse number 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 12. How do we love each other, Pastor? Well, first of all, I have to understand that God has already deposited in me the love that he wants us to share with each other. 1 John chapter 4. What verse I told you? Look at verse 12. Look what it says. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Jump down to verse number 20. Verse number 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his wife, hateth her husband, he or she is a liar. For he that loveth not his wife, loveth not her husband, whom he had slept with every night. How can he or she love God who had not, who had, who had not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that who, he who loveth God love his wife or his husband. Also, thank you. Here's the thing. How can we as Christian folk Say that we truly love God and you are fighting, putting a pillow, sleeping in another room with the person you said God gave you. Amen. How is it that we say we love God and we ain't even seen him? And yet the person I'm laying down next to, I can't stand. Pastor, I thought you said marriage was supposed to be happy, but I'm not happy. Amen. You're not happy because you're basing your happiness on circumstances and situations and not based on the word of God. God tells me if I love him, I got to love her. And I see her, if I see her every day. Amen. So if I cannot get along with her, then what am I doing? So we, last week we began to look at some characteristics of love. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's see if we can wrap up those characteristics today. 1 Corinthians Chapter number 13. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 13. We, we begin to look at how love should operate. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13. Look at verse number one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love and become a, a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and, and all knowledge and, have, and, and though I have all faith. So that I can remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long, we found out. Go to Hebrews. Hold your place there in 1 Corinthians 13. Go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Watch this now. Chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I got to have patience with my mate. Sometimes you have to wait till they grow up. You married them, but they still acting like children. Amen. They still have children tendencies. But you the one that picked them. Because he was your knight in shining armor. <laughs> and now you just have to wait for him to grow up. So you got to put on some patience. Somebody say patience. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse number 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For you have need of what? Patience. patience, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You got to put on some patience, amen? Right. Some patience with their bad behaviors, like throwing their socks on the floor. <laughs> patience. How long, it took, how long it took for me to get that, that, uh, that understanding? It took me like two or three years. It took, not, not, huh? It took a while, no, two or three years. Leave it at two or three years. <laughs> Mom, but you're going to say it took a while. It took, it took a while. <laughs> uh, see, she's not teaching with me. I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move over here. <laughs> Don't come here. It's important to send me back that way. You're still working on him, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. No, no, but, but, but she, she did not throw me away because I didn't put my clothes in the hamper. Amen. She didn't throw me away because I didn't do everything she wanted me to do at that time. She had some patience with me. I didn't get me a new wife because she couldn't. Move on, Pastor. <laughs> Cook. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Since Gwen couldn't burn rice, but good when we got married. Amen. I told her to put the rice in the water. She couldn't burn it good. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. I, I, I compliment her. I compliment her with that. Praise the Lord. But I, I had some patience with her. And here it is. Here it is. After six months of marriage, you fed up. Amen. Now, I found that the reason why people get fed up is because what you did to get her, you stopped doing it after you got her. Hello, somebody. And now you done ran out of patience because he used to bring you flowers every week. And now you barely can get a flower. Amen. But just like we have to wait patiently on the Lord, we need to wait patiently on our mate. You got the right one. Amen. Say you got the right one. Some of y'all looking like, hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Then we found out, we found out that in 1 Corinthians said that, that, that love is kind to each other. Amen. It's courteous to each other. It's, it's, it's gentle. It's helpful. It's showing favor with each other. Kind. And the Bible says that we ought to be kindly affectionate one to the other. I mean, you ought to be gentle with your mate. Every, look, that, I love it when Sister Gwen just rubs me on my back. She just, you know, if I don't get any, anybody to tell me I've done a good job and Sister Gwen rubbed me on my back, oh, that's kindness toward me. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. But, <laughs> hey amen, why do you treat your mate unkindly? You don't even open the door for it, brother. You tell her hop in like I used to do. I'm telling you. Kindness says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be gentle toward her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then we found out, we found out that I have to, I'm not envious. Love is not envious. It's not jealous. Uh, you know, it's not trying to one-up each other. Amen. <laughs> it's not trying to get uh, uh, popularity or positions over the other. Love doesn't do that. Love doesn't say, because you bought this, I'm going to buy something. Amen? Because they're applauding you, I want them to applaud me. That's not what love does. Love, love says, listen, I'm going to make sure that you have all your needs taken care of. Who praise the Lord. We found out on last week that love is not puffed up. It doesn't boast in itself. And, and watch this. Now, in, in our day and time, our young ladies are getting an education quicker and faster than our men are. They're getting good, successful jobs more than our men are. And some, it, it, it will be wrong for you to tell your husband, your mate, look, we here because of me. That's being puffed up. If it wasn't for me, well, I thought y'all were one. Because you couldn't do it without the other. Amen? You, 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 you overestimate yourself. I'm the reason for the season. 
You puffed up. That's, that's what's wrong with you. You puffed up. Amen. <laughs> and God said he hates those that are proud. Those who will boast in themselves. If you're going to boast, you better boast in the Lord. That look at what the Lord has done. It's marvelous in our eyes. That, that's what they were saying this morning. Look at what God has done. Amen. Amen. Now, you, you in 1 Corinthians? That's what we stopped at on last week. Amen. No, we, t- we stopped at unseemly. Unseemly. That's what we stopped at, right? Yeah, we stopped last week at unseemly. And we said that was inappropriate, unsuitable. Amen. And so we said on last week that, that, that even in our dress, we cannot be unseemly. Amen. You're a married woman. Well, forget just married. You're a woman of God. Cover yourself up. You don't have to show all the goods. There's some things that just reserved for your husband. Brothers, you too. Your shirt's so tight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Move on, Pastor. Move on. Why you don't even go there? Don't even go there. Praise the Lord. Cause, cause see, love says, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Whew. Sister Gwen, she'll take me shopping, and she'll come back and ask me, "Do you like this?" Not that she, she, she you know, if she liked it and I didn't, she, I, I believe that she would say, "Okay, if you don't like it, I'm not gonna wear it," because she want to please me. Amen. And see, when love says it's not going to be unseemly, she says, I want to do everything to please you. Wow. You mean to tell me that Sister Gwen want to please you, Pastor? Yes, she does. She'll get up and she'll put something on. She'll say, how does this look? And if I say I, I, I just don't like it, she'll take it off. I'm serious. She has some blue jeans. I don't like those blue jeans. She, she'll say, are these the jeans? I say, that's not the jeans. Praise the Lord. So the next, the, next, the next thing there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, watch this. It says, that was in verse 4 and 5, and so it says, uh, it, love does not, seek, uh, does not behave itself unseemly, does not seek her own, is not easily provoked. Amen. Love does not seek her own, and it does, it's not easily provoked. Amen? In other words, love knows how to control his anger. Amen? And love doesn't blow up when something happens. Love doesn't punch out walls, kick in the door. Amen? Amen? Throw the television down. Start throwing plates and bowls at each other. It done got quiet in the house. I must be in the right spot, amen. See, it's only when you haven't grown up, when something doesn't go your way, you act like a child. And you start tossing things just to get what you want. Love doesn't do that. Love doesn't cause domestic violence to come in the home. Amen? Love doesn't beat his wife up just because he's the stronger physically. That's not what love is. Amen? Love says, I would never touch you inappropriately. And I, I, I've seen that in these days, domestic violence is just not a man touching a woman. Sister girl will beat you down. <laughs> no, love, see, love, 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 love takes into account that her body is my body. And so if I punch her out, I'm punching me out. And if love says... I'm willing to give myself for you, then why would I want to beat you up? And I believe you can control yourself. I believe you can control your anger. 
well, Pastor, I, I, this, this is just who I am. No, no, no. The Bible says we are new creatures. Yeah. Old things are what? Passed away. Passed away. Behold, all things what? See, you know the scripture. You already know the scripture. You just have to learn how to renew your mind. That is not the will of God for you to beat your mate up. Amen. You see folk all the time, they're ready to act a fool. Soon as something happens. Amen. You're out at the restaurant, y'all just having a peaceful meal. And the waiter just act, don't, don't do right. And then all of a sudden you just blow your top. That, 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 that is not what love does. Amen. <laughs> Love doesn't scream and holler at each other. Okay. Let me give you Proverbs 14. Let me just give you some anger scriptures. Come on. So y'all looking at me kind of funny. Proverbs 14. Look at verse number 17. Huh. Proverbs 14, verse 17. See, if you have to yell and scream to get your point over, I, I believe your point is weak. Amen. Because, look, I never have to raise my voice as Sister Gwen. No, I, in 25 years of marriage, not one time have I raised my voice at her. Not one time. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me clarify. Now, when I'm downstairs and she upstairs, I got to yell, hey, I need you. That's it, though. I'm not, when we're talking and dialoguing with one another, never have to raise my voice. Never have to get angry. And guess what? I can control it. Amen? You can control it. I just couldn't help myself, Pastor. I just couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Yes, you could. You can help yourself all the time. Proverbs 14. He that is soon angry, deal it foolishly. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Now watch how the Amplifier puts this. He who foams up quickly and flies into a passion, deals foolishly, and a man of wicked plots and plans is hated. So when you foam up quickly, the Bible says you are, you're going to act like a fool. Whew, praise the Lord. Uh-huh. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Look at verse number 19. And look, this anger, anger is not limited to a man. Okay, you ready? Proverbs 21, verse number 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. You know what he's saying? It's better for me to live outside than to be in the, in the house with a woman who acting a fool. And the brother said, <laughs> I, knew, I knew I'd get an amen right there. I showed it. I showed it. I showed it. Amen. Amen. But, but, but listen. Okay, let me just continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. Go to, uh, whoo, I got, go to uh, Proverbs uh, 25. No, 22, 22. Proverbs 22. Anger is a learned behavior. <laughs> you can learn how to be angry. Amen. You can learn how to be angry. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 24. Proverbs 22, verse 24. Look what it says. Make no friendships with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou what? Learn his ways and get a snap thy soul. So I can learn based upon... The people that are around me. Amen. Angry behavior. So if I grew up in a house whose parents were uh, violent toward each other, I could learn that behavior. And then assume that that behavior is acceptable behavior. Amen. And it's not. He said, look, don't you learn those bad, that, those bad habits? <laughs> you know, because if you come up in here with that foolishness, it's going to be a different thing here. Now, I, you, know, you know how it is. You see your friends, your friends try to, try to tell you, hey, man, look, if I was you, this is what I would do. 
Well, you get into a relationship and you'll find out, no, you can't do that. Proverbs 25. Amen. Love is not angry. Love is not angry. Proverbs 25. Amen. Proverbs 25. Look at verse number 23. Proverbs 25, verse 23. You ready? What it says. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Amen. Mm. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. So if you're in a relationship that have anger issues, I believe you could change. Amen. I believe that you could demonstrate love that God has put in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse number 26. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Look what it says. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may, get, have, that he may have to give to them that need it. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye kind one to the other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So look what he says in verse 26. That I should not go to bed angry, upset. Amen. You need to deal with the challenge that you're facing with your mate before you go to sleep. Because what happens if they don't wake up? How you going to feel? Amen. So I got I to take care of my challenge that I'm facing before I go to sleep. <laughs> then the Bible says that I ought to forgive each other. OK, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. What has your mate done to you that you haven't already done to God? And if God can't forgive your mess, can you forgive your mate? Amen. Amen. <laughs> what, what is it that your mate done to you? They came home late? They didn't take out the trash? They didn't cook? And even if they messed over you, you messed over God. And he said, you ought to forgive one another like I forgave you. Now, if God can forgive us our mess, can we not forgive our mate of their mess? Whew. See, I handle my anger issue by saying, okay, I'm willing to forgive. Oh, my goodness. I'm willing to put aside what you've done to me. Now, here's the thing. You are two uniquely different people. Come from two different backgrounds. You are subject to mess up. Praise the Lord. You ain't going to get everything right. So that's why you need to be quick to forgive. Go to Mark chapter 11. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11. I got to be quick to forgive. Amen. Mark chapter 11. <laughs> Look at verse number five, 25. Mark chapter 11, verse number 25. And when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. If you have ought against any, your husband or your wife, they are in the any. Any means anybody. 
So if you are harboring unforgiveness in your heart against your mate, God says, look, when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. Now, remember, we read in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, our prayers could be hindered if our relationship is not right. So therefore, we got to forgive each other when we find ourselves in a situation that we're having a challenge in. Baby, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And I guarantee you, if we would learn what Jesus said about forgiving each other, the divorce rate in the church will go all the way down. Amen. Amen. You got somebody in your ear saying, "If I, I wouldn't forgive him. Well, what, what about letting God in your ear? He said, when you, when you, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any. So if my mate upsets me, guess what? I got to forgive him. If they don't do what I want, I got to forgive them. Whoo, praise the Lord. Because I want to get my stuff forgiven. I know Sister Gwen ain't done nothing. Look, when I look at my, at my history, at what I did, amen, I know I messed up. And if I just think about what God has forgiven me for, ain't nothing she done equals that. And see, some of y'all want to be like Peter. Lord, how often shall I forgive him? <laughs> Up to seven times? <laughs> he messed over me last week. And he messed over me the week before that. How often shall I forgive him of that mess? How often? How often? How long shall I go through this? How long, how long shall I forgive him? Up to seven times? See, Peter thought he was slick because, you know, we say three strikes and you out. Peter came back and said, okay, God, I, I'll give you seven. And Jesus responded, seven times 70, 490 times. But now you have to look up, hook up with what Luke said. Luke said, forgive him seven times in a day. Now think about that for a second. 490 times seven. Okay, somebody got a calculator, somebody quickly, somebody with a calculator. 490 times 7. I think it's 3620 or something like that. <laughs> 3430. 3,430 times a week. Now, do they mess over you that much? Let's be honest. Let's, let, look, look, let's just talk. Does your mate mess over you 3,430 times in a week? Okay, time 52. Time 52. Come on, quickly. Yeah, 3,430 3, times a week. 3,430 times 52. 178,360 times a year. Clint. Come on now. No way. Ain't, ain't no way your mate is messing up that much. And, and Jesus says, what I've done for you, you got to do for others. What you say? You mean to tell me? <laughs> yeah, it's funny, huh? It's funny. Because y'all thinking about all the times they done messed up. And you trying to get up to 178,360. <laughs> yeah, they, they like, yeah, well, I, yeah. And you will never, ever make it. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make 3,430 times a week. You're never going to make 178,360 times a year that your mate messes over you. And you're going to get angry about that? When Jesus says you ought to forgive each other? Just like I forgave you, you ought to forgive me. Hmm. And then when I forgive you, I don't tell you I told you so. Amen. When, when, when I lost five figures of our, our money, and Sister Gwen told me not to do it because I thought I was going to make an investment. Praise the Lord. And she said, this is not a good investment. I said, yes, it is. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this trigger. I'm going to pull this trigger. Yes, I am. 
I lost five figures of our money. Now, she had to get to a place of forgiving me. Because, <laughs> boy, boy, I lost five figures, Marvin. I'm like, five figures. I just threw it in the wind. And she did not come back and tell me, I told you that wasn't a good investment. Not one time. Because love doesn't do that. Love doesn't come in kicking and screaming and says, look, you just threw five figures away of our money. I could have, you know what I could have got with that money? <laughs> and he spent $20 in, that you didn't approve of. <laughs> Praise the Lord. $20. And you all bothered by it. And now you want him to sleep in the other room. Amen. For $20. Much love to y'all. Much love. Much love. I, I, know, I know I hit the nail on the head. I know. I know. Because see, some of y'all mad right now. Amen. But you got to learn how to forgive each other. He says, just as Christ has forgiven us, we got to be willing to forgive each other. Amen? Because that's what love does. Love doesn't keep a tally of what's, what's been done wrong. You messed up over here, you messed up over there. Really, really, love is blind. Go to, go to Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. <laughs> now, I am not suggesting that you leave here today and you go up and you intentionally go up and mess up and say, well, you know, love covered that. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, somebody might take this lesson today and say, well, you know, well, Pastor Sharp said that that's covered. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 10. Hey, Amen. Look at verse number 12. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Hatred stirreth of strife, but love covered what? Amen. It covers all sins, all transgressions. That's what love does. Love is like peanut butter. Amen. Once I get a good dose of, of peanut butter on the bread, I can't see the bread no more. Amen. That's what love does. It covers all that. Amen. Hallelujah. But it ain't feisty, it ain't fighting, and it ain't none of that stuff, man. I, 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 Gwen and I, we see this stuff, man, we, and we, can't, we cannot figure out how these two Christian folk, who on Sunday morning they're raising their hands, giving worship to God, who they haven't seen, and yet want to beat each other up, who they see every day. And it perplexes us, because I, I, I'm looking like, don't they have the same word we have? I know I showed them, and unless they fronting and not making it to the scripture. You know, I say, Hezekiah, you way over here. Yeah, go ahead, Pastor, go ahead. You ain't never made it there. But I can't understand these, that, that God wants us to love each other. And here we are, we fighting each other. And then we raise another generation of fighters. We raise another generation of men who say that women are second-class citizens when they don't understand that this is part of me. If, 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 if she's a second-class citizen, then I must be myself. And after all, God say, I'm going to give you somebody to help you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you somebody that's going to help you. Because there's areas in your life that's deficient. And you need some help. I know, look, I don't know about anybody. I know I needed some help. Yeah. I, I acknowledge I needed some help. I, I look, I was, you know, I was twitching and stuff like, praise the Lord. Woo, Sister Gwen kind of calmed the twitch down a little bit, you know. Amen. <laughs> just messing with y'all, just messing. That's a joke. I wasn't twitching. That's just a joke. Go to, uh, mm, go to uh, Psalms 86. Psalms 86. Mm. Hallelujah. 
See if I can end with this. Psalms 86. Look at verse number, who praise the Lord. Psalms 86, verse number 15. Psalms 86, verse 15. Watch this. You ready? Look what it says. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. What is God? He's, he's what? Full of what? He's full of compassion and what? And gracious and what? And long-suffering and what? Okay. If we are the children of God, and our desire is to be like him. The Bible says that we ought to be full of compassion, just like God is. Amen? We ought to be gracious, long-suffering, plenteous, plenteous in mercy. That means overflowing in mercy. Amen? Your mate ought to be able to, when they have wounds, know that your mercy is going to cover them. Because you plenteous in it. Amen? Love. Go back to 1 Corinthians. I said that was going to be my last scripture. Let me go back to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. Love thinking no evil. <clears throat> it's only the tricks of the enemy <clears throat> that'll make you think that your mate is cheating on you. Now, I'm talking about if they're not cheating. I mean, there, there might be some signs, you know, but when you start thinking evil about cutting them, scratching the car, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm trying to be relevant to you, see, because this, people have these thoughts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till you go to sleep, and then that's when I'm going to take care of him. What did you say, did Bake him a pie and throw it on him. But love doesn't think evil like that. Mm -mm. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoicing in truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endureth all things. Love never fail. And if love never fail, then that means our relationship should never fail. If love never fail, and we're operating in love, then our marriage would never fail. I told her we're going home together. Amen. We're going to live 120. I'm going to live 122. She's going to live 120. <laughs> but we love, our love ain't going to fail. I made a choice. I seen divorce in my family, I made a choice. I ain't getting a divorce. You with me? When I said, well, yeah, hello, somebody, praise the Lord. <laughs> when, when I said I do, I meant that. Yeah. To death do us part. Amen? And I'm not talking, ooh, praise the Lord. It ain't going to ever fail. I made up my mind. I don't care what she do. No, 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 seriously. No, you got to look, because each one of you got to make this decision. I made up my mind. I don't care what she does. I'm going to still love her. Now, she ain't going to go out there and do nothing, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I just made up in my mind. Natalie, I'm not going to do nothing. I, I'm going to love her until 122. I'm going to leave a legacy for my grandkids. And my great-grandkids. And my great-great-grandkids. That Papa love Momo. And guess what? When they see that picture, because look, we, we learn by example. If I can learn how to be angry by watching folks, I can learn how to love by watching folks. And I just made up my mind, I'm going to be an example in this area. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to demonstrate how you love each other. So even when y'all looking at us, this ain't no show for us. 
you know, we laugh and joke. This ain't no, this ain't no game for us. This is how we really are. My children can attest to the fact. This is how they, they act like this all the time. All the time. Yes, they, and, and I want you to see that. That I truly love my wife. <laughs> Amen. I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise.